All right, squad, in today's video, I'm gonna add Ruby LLM to our Luxury Stage project, because why not? And I'm gonna show you quickly what we're gonna achieve. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have the ability to create a chat. And then from here, we're gonna just say, ask it a question, and then it's gonna go off, do its thing, and come back and answer the question. So Kayam is a coastal town and it's very easy to implement. And you can see here, we're storing and persisting all of this. So it's very easy way to create a chat or images or anything inside of the app. Let's jump in. So we're gonna add Ruby LLM to our Luxury States project. Everyone's adding AI. I wouldn't usually add a feature like this to this website, but just because we're having a bit of fun, why not? This gem is built by Carmine Paulino. It is sick. I highly recommend. So we're gonna go gem Ruby LLM right and i just do this as a habit it's just so it makes it easier for me to find them later so now what we're going to do is just in here we're just going to go to bundle install get that happening boom done let's run bin dev so that the project actually runs we can actually see it jump into here here's luxury stays looking really good now what i'm thinking this isn't really an app built for interacting with a llm but there may be use cases that come over time how about we built something where we could just ask like could you tell me about Gerringong, for instance because what i want to do here is not just have a basic chat agent i want to give it a little bit of context so it's like you can actually talk i mean i mean it is when I mean, i'm not giving it any context it's gonna go and find it itself so let's just let's just do it let's see what happens okay so first things first added the gem now we need to configure it to do that in rails we're just going to create a new initializer so that lives in config initializers and we're going to go here ruby lm rb boom chuck that in and then what we're going to do here is we're going to grab this and we're going to chuck it in here we don't use amazon bedrock so get rid of it. Don't have deep seek, but what I'm gonna do here, just so like if you were doing this, just do that. Cause like if you're gonna add it in later, let's run with OpenAI just to start because it's super easy to get an API key. Instead of using the environment variables, because I just don't like that pattern. It's really annoying when you deploy. We're going to use our Rails credentials. So we're going to go rails.application.credentials.dig and we're going to go open AI. We're going to say API key. Boom, save that. Get rid of that one. Boom. All these ones we can add later. Sick. So what we want to do next is we want to go into our credentials. So we're going to go add this here. To run this command, editor code, whatever your editor is wait bin rails credentials edit and then the environment right so we're going to do development and you'll need to do it for production but i'll quickly jump in and show you what that's going to look like so funnily enough i actually haven't ever used any credentials in development we have it in production for aws but what we're going to do here is open api and then we're going to say api key and then what you're going to do is you're going to put your api key here right so i'm not going to do that because then you guys are going to steal my api key and go nuts but Go to OpenAI and get a key. Okay, so just quickly have a, give you a quick look at the UI. So you're gonna go to platform.openai.com, sign up for an account, add some money, because it costs money to do AI things. And then you can just hit create new uh, secret key. And then that's gonna pop up. You're gonna copy that value and then you're gonna paste it in here. So once you've saved that file and closed it, you're gonna see here, we get this and then we got file encrypted and saved. So that file will actually get committed to the repo and using the little key that we have, it'll be in here. So never lose these keys, because if you do, you can't read your values, but those keys are now, um, will decrypt this, okay? Done that, set up the API key, we should be good to go. So we've done this configuration. Now we should be able to have a chat with our LLMs. Let's jump into Rails C here. So the first thing we do is we set up a chat. Now you can define the model here if you want, or you use the default, which is GPT-40 mini. We obviously don't have Claude, so that wouldn't work. But anyway, we're gonna start a chat, okay? Now we have the chat object, and it literally is as simple as just saying, chat.ask, who are you? All right, let's see what it says. Now that's gonna hit the API, and then it's gonna reply with content. And you can see it says, I am an AI language model created by OpenAI designed to assist with a wide variety of great range of questions and tasks by generating human-like text. How can I help you today? Perfect, we're integrated with AI. Open AI, I should say. It's that simple, right? So Ruby LLM is a wrapper on top of all these different services and it just makes it really easy to work. It does images, it does like chat, embeddings, and there's a whole bunch of things you can use tools as well, which is something I'll cover in another video so you can get the AI to leverage a tool to do stuff that we need it to do. So like get the weather or something. So very cool. That's not the end, that's just the beginning. So what we wanna do is we wanna integrate this now 
with rails. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. And I don't use the, the direct integration, but we'll keep going. With the rails integration, create chats, create messages and create tool calls, right? So this is the standard way. If you wanted to persist, if you wanted to build like a tool that had all the different chat models and you wanted to have each chat recorded, this is how we do it. What we will do first is we will exit this console. We're gonna go rails G model, yeah? and it's gonna be called a chat. You can call it whatever you want. Just to, for simplicity, we'll call it the same as these because I have found it's hard to, a little bit harder to configure. Generate that model. We're gonna generate the, I think it's called message like that. Messages, yep. So we're gonna shove that one there and then we're gonna have a tool call. So it actually records every tool call, All right? Punch that. Boom, okay, should have three migrations now. Now, if we jump into DB migrate, scroll down here, we've got chats, close this, close this, close this, create messages, there we go, all right. So now we can go in here and we can grab all this. So we just wanna create a chat and all that's doing is storing a model. And that, the only reason that chats exist is so that we can have a whole bunch of messages belonging to a parent. So we're gonna have chats and then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna have messages. We're gonna create the messages table. This is basically the main piece stores all the messages you can see it references the chat it's got a role so the role is either user or system or I think the other one is possibly agent or assistant and then you got the content so that's the string that was replied the model that was used so you can actually swap model mid chat which is quite a cool feature how many input tokens are used and how many output tokens and then if it used the tool call right very handy I love that input tokens stuff there. So if you are building a usage-based app, you can very easily figure that out. And then here we have tool calls. We reference a message. So a tool call belongs to a message. It has a tool call ID. So this is actually the ID of your class that you make, the name, and then any arguments that were provided to us. So you can actually, it basically creates a log. I think if you wanna see like what tools are being used the most, you can actually see that. Very cool. Now we wanna migrate this. So we're gonna go Rails DB migrate send it super weird for this app to have chat or anyway but let's let's do it you know you never know maybe one day everyone's adding ai to everything would not recommend but hey so we've got that there now what we have to do is actually set up these models now i'm sure what's going to come if it hasn't come already and i'm just a little bit slow we're going to have a task for sure that's just going to do this for us because this is yeah all manual but i'm sure there's going to be a time where this just happens what we need to do here is access chat what i would do like anytime you're integrating something like this is like understand what it's doing. So for me, I've spent a lot of time in these docs and everything's really, I like love looking at this because it's so nicely written. But what you want to do is here is you're going to go into the repo act. You're going to look at lib Ruby LLM active record acts as, right? So this is the tool we're using. You can see this is a module which is extending an active support concern. It's got access chat. So basically when you add that piece of code access chat, this is what it's doing. So it's initializing with the message class called message, which is the module. Model and a tool class tool call. Then it's including the chat methods. Keep an eye out for that. And it's saying has many messages, dependent destroy, it's got an order on it. And then it's delegating complete and add message to the LLM. Now, if we look at chat methods down here, you can scroll down chat methods. And that's another module that has a tool call class and then it has two LLM and you can actually see what's going on. So it's initializing a new chat with the model ID you've, the chat is set to. Boom. It's loading in the existing messages to give context. So every time you make a call, it's gonna add all the past context and then reply based on that. And then it's saying here on new message is persisting it. And then on message is persisting the completion. So it creates the message first and then it adds everything else at the end, especially if you're doing streaming or something like that. And you got all this other stuff here. So it's just good to look at. I actually went and looked at this to rebuild our own version. Cause then like this didn't suit in the apps that I'm building, but it's good to know, okay? How, especially how everything works. Cool. So we've added that after Ken's long ramble and then we've got access message. So a message access message so you could have a different class it could be comment could be whatever message makes real heaps of sense in this context so we've got a message and then we've got a tool call right so down the bottom here so instead of us defining message belongs to chat chat has many it's all just being done for us and that's the magic there it's good to sometimes understand the magic you know we've done the configuration and we've got this all right so let's let's now use this and see how it persists so we ran db migrate you know just restart the server just for a sanity check anyway we got this chat all right, so let's see, what are they saying? Chat is create a new chat, all right? So we're gonna start up a new chat with GPT-4 mini, boom, hit that. So you can see here, it's inserted the chat into our database and then we can also have a little look to make sure no one's lying to us. We can see our new models, we can see our chats and there it is, new model. 
great. Now, what does it say? Let's do a question. So let's say chat ask, what's the capital of France? So we've inserted into the messages instantly and you can see the content was nil or was nothing. It was like an empty string here. No model ID, no input tokens, nothing. And then when it's got the response, you can see we're getting an update and it's adding in the content that we got, right? It's filtering out the token because it thinks it's secret, but it's not guys. But you can see here, Look at this, this is so sick. So without us doing anything really, we've got messages coming in here. The user asked, what is the capital of France? It wasn't a model, wasn't didn't use any of that stuff, cool. And then it's come back, we've got the same chat, now we've got a role. The assistant said the capital of France is Paris and it used this model and it costs 13 input tokens and eight output tokens, wonderful. There we go, like we're actually running. So we've got a chat now. We'd have to implement all the UI, which I'm not gonna do in this video because it will take a lot longer, but something for the future. So maybe there's demand, we'll do that. But now we can already see, right? Like if we go chat.messages.last.content, boom, Capital France. So now we're ready, to, we're ready to go. So you can say, all right, let's continue with our chat and say, tell me more about that city right now if you were just to send that one message to chat gpt you're going to get nothing back because it's like what city are you talking about but because we've got asking about paris it's got that context so you can actually going to go here and now you can see here here's our content right paris often referred to as the city of light as the capital and largest city and it's blah 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 cool man cost me 520 output tokens and you can see the difference here so it's very easy to build this ui because we can say like user assistant user assistant and you've got all that context and you don't have to do anything right like you dropped in four or five lines of code and you've got a chat bot built into your platform now obviously that's cool right like it's very cool but it's really just a basic chat and that's not really going to be any use in our apps that we build we want to build apps that are like have the context of what's going on right so let's see how we can use this tool to actually do that so in llm world we usually define context in a system prompt let's start a new chat so we're gonna go boom now we should have let's just double check that all worked we go to chats boom there's our second chat all right Usually what you'd also do, you'd expand on this model. You'd have a chat belonging to something in your system. So, you know, it could be an organization. It could be a project. It could be anything, right? That you, whatever you work with, you would make the chat belong to that, right? Rather than just having this, like anyone can access this. There's no like permissions or authentication on this, you know, very broad, but it just gives you the building blocks. So this doc is obviously for version 1.1. I don't think 1.1 is released yet. So let me just double check Ruby. No, we're on 1.0.1, so 1.1 hasn't been released but this is coming this here is different so we have to use this let's grab this okay so we're going to paste that in so we're going to say chat messages create role system now i'm pretty sure it has to be like that and then the content of the prompt you can give it a role so this is now where you get like prompt engineering right like it depends on how advanced you want to make it like i say you are a travel guide and this is to our app who specializes in the south coast of australia right so that's contextual to our app you answer questions from users and give ideas for things to do in the area and then we can say always be friendly and concise when replying right like i think probably that's too much for a role but i'm doing this on the fly so now we would probably store this somewhere in the system so we don't have to constantly do it and this is where you'd probably override the default so that we always inject this prompt before starting any chat so we can kind of tell it who it is in our app like yeah you are chat gpt cool but in our app this is who you are okay so we're gonna create that so now this is only gonna persist for this one chat so keep that in mind right but anyway so let's go chat now and now we can say we can say chat ask and we can say tell me about Kayama and let's see what it does I wrote south coast of Australia so now it should know Kayama about the south coast of Australia let's see if it if it actually does it give it a second we got to talk to the space here we go so Kayama is a charming coastal town located on the south coast of New South Wales Australia it's known for its Stunning natural beauty, including beautiful beaches, lush, blah, blah, blah. Dining, enjoy fresh food, seafood, and local cuisine. Enjoy your visit. It's saying enjoy your visit because we've told it that it's a travel agent, right? So this is where it gets really cool. So you can now build out your prompt, your system prompt, and add context to it as much as you want to give the best output to the user, right? So this is something to kind of keep in mind. So you can see here, we've got our chat. And then if we go back to our messages, we've got all our messages here. 
and you can see we've given it a system prompt, then the user, and now, sorry, a system prompt, then the user, then thing, the assistant. And that's how we add the LLM function here. And this is like the basics, right? So this is, I'm just touching on today, installation, system prompts, normal prompts, and these instructions are coming. So you can see this, this is gems being actively built right now, and it's very good. Like I have used it and it's very good. There are still some things that I really want is like structured output, which means that we can always get JSON out so if we want to use this somewhere else really cool but before we go let's check how we can create an image right i don't know if you can do system prompts for this one yet but what we'll do here is we're going to do an image and we're going to say a sunset or it's a sunrise over the ocean in Kiama. let's see if we can do that right we're hitting chat gpt so let's see where we go it's just painting guys let's give it a minute so there we go all right so Image dot URL. That's what we want. Boom. There we go. I also use Delhi still. It's not using the new guys. They haven't created the API for that yet. Oof. Doosh. That almost looks like Kayama. I'm not going to lie. But there we are. Right. So it does images. What do we have to do? Nothing. We just have to say paint. Amazing. Highly recommend this library. So if you are looking at adding LLMs into Ruby, there is a solution. Or into Rails, there is a solution. All the JavaScript lads have all that stuff. We do too. So get to it. Start using it. And if you like it, contribute back to the model, the gem, because it's busy being worked on, like hectically. And our friend uh, Carmen or Carmine is smashing it with his team and they're building some really cool stuff. So I wanted to give some screen time to this because it is sick and I do really enjoy using it. And it's awesome. Look, chat, vision and audio, PDF analysis, image generation, embeddings, tools, Rails integration, and streaming. So streaming is really cool. I haven't done or implemented that yet. When I do, I'll do a video on it. I also wanna show you how to do tools. So if you want me to do tools, drop a comment and we'll have a look at how we can do that inside of here. We probably wanna build some sort of UI on top of this as well, because kind of doesn't do anything right now but until then catch you guys later